and welcome to Grammar and Youth. Today I'd like to talk about different ways of expressing the future. You already know about some basic future tenses. One of them would be the will future. Are you going to the cinema? I will come with you. So here the will future expresses a spontaneous decision. Or you might already know about the going to future. Peter and I are going to go on vacation this summer. So the going to future expresses fixed plans or arrangements. But since you already know these different types or, of future tenses, let's not waste too much time with them. Rather, I would like to take a look at different ways of expressing the future with you today, which you might not have heard about already, or which you might have forgotten. First of all, let's take a look at this sentence. I'm going out in 10 minutes. At a first glance, this doesn't really look like a future tense, since, as you can already see, this is actually the present progressive. But the present progressive is used as a future tense in this context. So here, the present progressive has got future meaning. And it is especially used for plans and arrangements. While the use is somewhat similar to the going to future, please do not confuse the two different future tenses. The difference in this example would be I'm going out in 10 minutes, as you can see here, which is a present progressive form, or I'm going to go out in 10 minutes. Difference here. Let's take a look at another example. The train leaves at 10. Again, this doesn't really look like a future tense, but if I take a look at um, the clock now, and it's 9 o'clock, and I say the train leaves at 10, I'm using the simple present as a type of future tense. So, here as well, we have got the simple present in a future meaning. Since this type of future is used very often for exact moments of times in the future uh, and reoccurring events such as the train leaving, um, the bus leaving and things like that. It is also called the timetable future. This also tells us that this type of future is really really limited in use. It's just used for events in the future that have got an exact time and that you might typically find in some sort of timetable. The last two futures that you just saw or heard about are just regular tense or sentences that are used in a future meaning. Okay? Now let's take a look at a more real future if you wanna if you wanna say it like that. One of them would be the future progressive. Let's take a look at the following example. When Steve plays soccer, Jack will be watching a movie.
The first thing that you should notice with this example is that the future is called future progressive, which simply means that there is an ing form and it's a future ing form. The second thing is it really helps to imagine this type of future in or on a timeline. So let's assume this is the time and here we've got the present. So obviously our action is going to take place somewhere here. Right? But since we've got two different actions it's important uh, to think about um, how they are distributed. Well, one point certainly is the part when Steve plays soccer, which is a set moment in the future. So let's say Steve plays soccer at this point, okay? Then what about the other action? Jack will be uh, watching a movie. So obviously the watching a movie takes a lot of time, so we need uh, quite some time here. So let's change the color of our uh, arrow and add a second arrow to that. We don't know how long the movie is, but the actions are pro possibly connected um, something like this. So we've got two actions here. One of them is ongoing. This is Jack will be watching a movie. We're expressing it with a long double arrow here. The other one, when Steve plays soccer, only takes a short time. By the way, I know that playing soccer takes more than just a few seconds, but this is not important for our, for our example uh, because we're just looking at an action that is finished or that's not really important to us. What can we say about this type of future? At a certain point in the future one action or an action will have been happening for a long time and it is still or it will still be going on. So it's important that this action actually takes some time to happen. So it's happening, it will have been happening for a while. And it will still go on. So much for the future progressive. Let's take a look at the future perfect. Let's take a look at the future perfect. It's not too complicated either. Again, let's start with an example. When the year is over, Susan will have bought many dresses. The first thing you should notice with this example is that since it is the future perfect, there is a perfect form in the whole thing as well. So we've got the perfect and here we've got have bought which indicates that an action is over or that it is um, completing but somewhat relevant to a second um, point in time. Let's take the highlighting away. Again, it's very helpful to work with a timeline that helps us visualize the use of this tense here. So again, this is the future, 
here we've got the present tense. I don't want to use the color red. Uh, we've got the present tense here. So this is the moment that we are in now. And here we've got when the year is over. In our future, this is exactly here. So this is an action. The point of the future that we're looking at has stopped at this very point here. Susan will have bought many dresses. How can we, we visualize that? Well, we know that from the moment of speaking, which is now, up until the end of the year, so when the year is over, Susan will have bought many dresses. We can visualize that something along those lines. So Susan will have bought many dresses in this period of time. Note, however, that we're not exactly looking at the duration of time. We just see the time as a kind of closed box and we want to know what has happened in that time but we're not interested on uh, in how long Susan took for buying the dresses. That's why we're not using an arrow here. This is rather easy to explain. So our explanation here is quite simple. At a certain point in the future, an action will have finished and, which is very important, it will not go on. That's all there is to say about uh, the future perfect, that is, or actually it's not all that is to say, but this has only been a uh, short introduction and it's meant to brush up your knowledge of the tenses you already know. So I hope that helped and uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you soon again. Bye!